Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. Now how everybody be do this wonderful morning? It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you. Morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Leeds. Today is the 18th day of January in 2024, and outside is dark and overcast. And I was just told that it just started to rain kind of heavy in Belize City. Mm -hmm. It rained a little bit last night and earlier this morning here in Dangriga, but overall, um, things have been quiet over this side. It's a little bit dark and overcast, um, not very chilly, just beautiful, beautiful weather. And of course, even though we can't see it, we know that the sun is still shining. We're going to kick things off this beautiful uh, Thursday morning. It is Thursday with one entitled Bright and Glorious is the Sky. Let's have a listen. Bright and glorious is the sky, radiant are the heavens high, where the golden stars are shining. All the race to earth inclining, beckon us to heaven above, beckon us to heaven above. On that holy Christmas night, through the darkness beamed a light, all the stars above were paling, all their luster slowly failing, as the wondrous star drew nigh, as the wondrous star drew nigh. Sages from the east afar, when they saw this wondrous star, went to find the king of nations, and to offer their oblations to the child, the newborn king, to the child, the newborn king. Him they found in Bethlehem, yet he wore no diadem. There they saw a maiden lowly, with an infant pure and holy, 
resting in her loving arms, resting in her loving arms. Guided by the star they found, him whose praise the ages sound, we to have a star to guide us, which forever will provide us with the light to find our Lord, with the light to find our Lord. And this star as bright as day, that will never lead us stray, with his message so appealing, is the word of God revealing, Christ the way, the truth, the life, Christ the way, the truth, the life. A lovely one there to begin this morning, today being the confession of St. Peter, bright and glorious is the sky. Let's continue then getting our words up on screen for today. Mm -hmm. And it should be up and running by now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Words in Psalm number 19, verse 14. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35, using verse 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your mm -hmm. Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verses 1 through to 8. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, it can be found on page 36. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it, his hands more to dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. At this time, we pause briefly to call to mind those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, and things perhaps that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 66 and 67. Let's have a listen. Psalm 66 Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of His name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your good strength, your enemies cringe before you. 
all the earth bows down before you. Sings to you. Sings out to you. Come now and see the work of God. How wonderful he is in his belief towards all people. He turns the sea into dry land so that they will chew the water on foot. And there we rejoice in him. In his might, he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you people. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in light and will not allow our feet to sleep. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us as that silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our back. You let enemies ride over our heads when he went with fire and water. But he brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has said, He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayers, nor withheld his love from me. Psalm 67 May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth our increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand you all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 13, the song of the three young men. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, it can be found on page 64. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. As it is the Feast of St. Peter, we have our Bible reading this morning coming from Acts chapter 10, verse 33 through to 44. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 34. 
then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. Then they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins in his name. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you would be so kind as to allow me to get back to the beginning of the reading here from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through to 44. Again, today, the 18th of January, we are celebrating the Feast of St. Peter. And I like that. The Confession of St. Peter. And the Confession of St. Peter, of course, is, as you would have heard at the ending of the reading, um, Peter is making a bold proclamation. Yes, Peter is making a bold proclamation. And it is believed, of course, that Peter, led by God, the Apostle, and filled with God's grace, he set out to acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And we join with Peter and with Christians everywhere, of course, in hailing Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And now it's interesting how the reading begins, yes? Because it begins in verse 34, with, pardon me, with Peter saying, I truly understand that God shows no partiality. Now, let me tell you, Peter was one of those apostles who believed that the Lord had come only to the Jews, that the Lord did not come to the Gentiles. And if you remember the story of Peter being in Cornelius' house. And it comes right before this, if you would read Acts chapter 10 from the beginning, or from halfway through, you would get it now. Peter, of course, received the vision while um, on the rooftop to go to Cornelius' house and to preach. And the vision that Peter received was the, the vision of the sheet, where the sheet came down with the animals on it. And on the sheet were animals that Peter thought would have been unclean by Jewish teaching. And in the vision, of course, the voice of God told him to get up and kill and eat. And he even argued in his vision with God that he would never do such thing because unclean things would not pass his lips. And the point of the vision that Peter had was to get Peter to understand that everything that God made is worthy. And God in the vision would have said to Peter, don't call unclean the things that I have made, which because I made them are clean. And it was to get Peter to understand that there is no partiality in God, that God will not show clean from unclean any difference. In Belize, we have, and in the Caribbean, no? we said the rain fall on the just and the unjust. And we say it because we understand that God shows no partiality, that in every nation, anyone who fears God and anyone who does what is right and acceptable to God will be, of course, blessed by God. And yesterday we spoke about Jesus explaining the love of God and John having to explain to his disciples the fact that he was not the Messiah, but that the Messiah came to share the love of God to all. Yeah. And Peter is sending out this message, having had his own mini conversion in his chest. 
I know when we think of conversion, we think of St. Paul, and we think of that dramatic light on the road to Damascus. But Peter had to have his own conversion. And when I say conversion, it's not that Peter didn't believe in Jesus. It's not that Peter didn't have faith in Yahweh. It's that Peter's mind was set in a particular way of thinking that had to be challenged by God and then transformed by God. I mean, consider this. We oftentimes feel that only the people in our clique are supposed to receive the benefits of our clique. And that's not the way it goes. I once had a lady, we do pantry delivery and we do um, outreach to many persons in our churches. And I once had a lady who, when she saw me going to deliver a pantry bag to a particular family, said to me, but Rev, that family isn't Anglican. And I chuckled, yes. Because you can't get frustrated. You have to work with people and meet them where they are and help them to change their understanding. And I chuckled and I said, well, you know, it's interesting. Because in giving out pantry, I never considered that it was only Anglicans that need to eat. It's simple. When we do what we do for the love of God, we do it or should do it without showing any partiality. Because God does not show partiality. At the time of Jesus and after the death of Jesus, when Peter is now seemingly rising up to the top and Peter is supposed to be leading the fellows into the promotion and the proclamation of the gospel of Christ, Peter has to be reminded that, no, it's not just for the Jews. And Peter and Paul in the beginning would have had their great contention because Paul, after his conversion, felt the Gentiles should be included. And Peter was saying, no, 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 this is just for us. Yeah. And it is, it is this confession from Peter of the fact that in God there is no partiality, but that in every nation, anyone who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to God. Hmm? And that's it. And he explains to them that the message had spread throughout all of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of John. And he gives all of these ideas, or he gives all of these timelines. Yeah? And it's a, a sermon, really, that he's preaching at Cornelius' house. And his sermon is, the, the, this is the foundation for Peter's understanding. Yeah, The gospel should now go forth from the Jews to the Gentiles. And this statement, again, goes completely against the prevailing Jewish thought. And that is why one of the reasons Jesus was killed. Remember, we spoke a few days ago about the scribes and the Pharisees and how they believed that the Jews were the chosen people and how they believed that the Gentiles did not have any part in that. And so when Jesus came, challenging this understanding and explaining to them that God is a God for all and God is a God of love, that was contrary to what they believed. And they saw Jesus' teaching as a radical and trying to upstage and undo all that Jewish teachings were proclaiming. Hmm? That statement that God is not a God who shows partiality goes against the prevailing Jewish thought. They believe that God showed partiality towards Jews and against the Gentiles. And you could understand, coming through all they did in the Exodus, mm -hmm. yeah, coming through all they would have experienced, the cloud by day and the pillar by night and God doing all he did for Pharaoh, the tradition and history that they would have been raised with, yeah? Yes, they were his chosen people, but not because they were his chosen people did they have a right to hate everybody else. And that's the thing, because God is a God of love. And God's love cannot be confined to one space, to one people, or to one time. If it can be, then he ceases to be God. In a sense, many Jews of Peter's day thought that God loved the Jews while hating the Gentiles. And so the Jews despise the Gentiles because that's the thought they had. And sadly, it's a thought that still is prevalent today, that still drives civil unrest and wars today. I am chosen by God and you are not. This belongs to me and it doesn't because God gave it to me. You really think God wanted to be out there killing your brother in his name? He who goes about claiming to be doing acts of violence and murder and evil atrocities in the name of God has clearly forgotten who God is. It was common for a Jewish man to begin the day with a prayer thanking God that he was not a slave, that he was not a Gentile, or that he was not a woman. That was common in Peter's time. 
It was a basic part of Jewish religion in the days of the New Testament. Hmm? But it went further in that it even went as far as refusing to help a Gentile woman at the time of her greatest need. Which is why when Jesus was found with the woman at the well, the disciples were shocked. One, she was a woman. There was no other men around. And two, she was not even Jewish. What you doing conversing with this kind? I hope it makes sense. Yeah? I hope it sheds light as to how radical yeah, the thought was that Jesus was bringing. As a matter of fact, if a Jew married a Gentile, the Jewish community would have a funeral for that Jewish person, considering them dead because they left the clique and went to covert <laughs> with the enemy. To even enter the house of a Gentile made a Jew unclean before God according to Jewish laws. That's the way the thought was. And what is absolutely sad is that these types of thought that divide God's people will exist. When a pastor from a different denomination could go to someone and say, you are going to hell because you are not worshipping on the right day, or you are going to hell because you listen to women preaching, or you are not going to get into salvation because you will not be counted in the numbers, anything that divides God's people and separates them from the love of God and the love of each other cannot be of God. It's that simple. Peter tells us, Every nation who fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. And Peter's point was not to imply that men like Cornelius, who he was preaching at his house at the time, were already right with God and didn't need to become followers of Christ. No. The point is that they needed not to feel excluded by God because of their background, because of their past, because of their race, because of their nationality. No. In Christ, there is no east or west, there is no Jew, there is no slave, there is no free. All are children of God. And that's how we have to look at each other. He is Lord of all. A powerful phrase showing the deity of Jesus. And Peter could never say this if Jesus were not. Because it would be the Holy Spirit that reveals it to him. And he gives a testimony and confesses the story of Jesus. Yeah? You know the message he sent the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ who is Lord of all. And he tells them that the message spread and it tells them about the baptism of John and it tells them how oppressed by the devil yeah, people were and Jesus set them free through healing and how it was acts of the devil that worked in men who caused him to be arrested and put to death. Peter wasn't sparing any words. Peter wasn't mincing anything for anybody. Notably, Peter's preaching to the Gentiles was essentially the same as he preached to the Jews. He presented the person and the works of Jesus Christ with an emphasis on the unjustness of his death, but then the glory and the beauty of the resurrection of Jesus and the responsibility of people who believe in these things to come to understand them and share them with each other. That's what Peter did. They killed him by hanging him on the tree. God raised him up on the third day and he appeared, but not to all people, to those who were chosen. And he commanded us to preach to the people who testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of both the living and the dead. And if those words sound familiar, it's because it's the basis of the Apostles' Creed. It's the profession and confession that Peter made that then guided all the apostles and everyone after that who comes to believe. When people ask you, what do you believe? Hmm? If a person from another denomination or a different religion asks you, what do you believe? You say you are Christians, what do Christians believe? What do you tell them? What words do you use to tell them what you believe? If you have never thought about that, let me give you some advice. If someone ever asks you as Christians what you believe, recite the Apostles' Creed. That is the profession of our faith. That is what we believe. That is what Peter, all the way back in his time, all the way back in Acts chapter 10, confessed and professed. 
that we believe in God, that we believe in his son, Jesus Christ, that we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit who made it all possible, that we believe that he came to free all of mankind, that we believe that they didn't like him. And so he was crucified and died, but he didn't stay dead. We believe he was resurrected because we saw him with our own eyes. And after he was resurrected, he ascended into heaven, promising us that he would come back again commanding us to continue to preach the message when somebody asks you as a follower of christ what do you believe at least know the words of the apostles Creed. that you like peter could boldly make a confession and a profession of your faith and that's what we celebrate on the 18th of january on the confession the feast of the confession of saint peter that peter recognized God is not a God for some. God is a God of all. That what Christ did through the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of the kingdom of all, kingdom of God, was done for the benefit of all. Peter confessed mm -hmm. that he was witness to these things and that he was commanded like the rest of us to go and profess all that they had seen. And Peter didn't do it of his own accord. He did it the power of the Holy Spirit. And while Peter was still speaking, that same Holy Spirit fell upon Cornelius and his whole household and all who were listening to the words. Pray. Pray that that same Holy Spirit will empower us and enlighten us to recognize who God is, to be able to boldly acknowledge who Christ is and what he has done for us. That that same Holy Spirit will strengthen and empower us to go out like Peter did to preach the unconditional universal love of God to everyone we come in contact with. Pray that like St. Peter. Hmm? Our minds and our hearts will always be open to the presence of God's Holy Spirit. That we will not separate one from another. Jesus himself said it. A house divided against itself will not stand. May we cease to focus on the differences that separate us and start to work towards the ties that bind. Start to recognize that God is a God for all and not just for some. All are created in the image and likeness of God. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. In God, there is no partiality, and neither should there be in us. Amen. Let us continue with the profession of our faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God. Oh. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. In this kingdom, love and love. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A on page 44. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among our nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge 
and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first collect for today is the collect for the confession of sin. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who inspired Simon Peter, first among the apostles, to confess Jesus as Messiah and the Son of the living God. Keep your church steadfast upon the rock of this faith, that in unity and peace we may proclaim the one truth and follow the one Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Together we say a colic for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Miss Sheridan Garbutt, and celebrating a birthday today is Mr. Jerry Valentine III, Mr. Ansel Diego, Mr. Michael Jenkins, and Miss Claudia Saki. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you'll have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your life. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Perry, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Bez. Miss Aislinn, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Berry, Miss Janet, and Miss Marley. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Krista, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, and Miss Molly. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Martha, Miss Martha, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss Lasson, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, and Miss Amy. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, and Miss Salome. We remember and pray for Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvery, Miss Lorraine, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Sonia. In our prayers, we remember and pray for Miss Beverly, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alea, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor. Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Patricia, Miss Koya, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Olichi, Miss Joan, Miss Ismail, Miss Marcia, Miss Joyce, Miss Melita, Miss Fiona, Miss Captain, Miss Elena, Miss Belina, Reverend Kelona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Media, Miss Eleanor, Miss Marie, Miss Caroline, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Reverend Linda, Miss Shenmadine, and Miss Felicia. We pray for Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Macy, Miss Petrona, Miss Irene, Miss Suzette, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, Miss Julian, Miss Ellis, Miss Petra, Miss Megan, and Miss Charlene. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, and Mr. Belvin. We pray for Mr. Newell Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., 
Mr. Carlos, Mr. Sean, Mr. Liz, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Mark, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Dion, and Mr. Pablo. We pray for Father Constancio, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kirk, Sir Colville, Mr. Michael Summers, Mr. Michael Sobanon, Mr. Brindle, and Mr. Ambrose. In our prayers, we remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, and Mr. Trevor. We pray for Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Mr. Albert, Bishop Wright, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Richard, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Marlon, Mr. Omar, Mr. Ted, Mr. Donald, and Mr. Paul. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for persons who would have recently contracted COVID-19. We continue to give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine, even as we pray for the containment and the elimination of this COVID-19. As we pray for those who are infirm, we continue to remember and pray for those who are prepared for the infirm. We pray especially for the protection and the enablement of all our medical professionals in the performance of our duties, for all our medical professionals in their various capacities and both in public and private usage. We pray for God's provision and protection over you. We pray especially for the physical guardian and our insulin, so green, so salmon here, Ken Young, Arnold, Arana, Poyar, Manzanero, Joseph Eck, and Flores. We pray for Nurse McKinney, Nurse Gill, Nurse Bursley, Nurse Jean, Lino, Nurse Julie, Nurse Oliva, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Ashley, Nurse O'Hell, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Cabrera, Nurse Shelley, and Nurse Alina. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who are unable for whatever reason to pray for themselves, praying together. Heavenly Father, give us life and hope, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who may start with their needs. That those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing. Through Jesus Christ, Lord, who lives and means with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving, the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Miss Erwin Bernard, the family of Bishop Nicholson, the family of Miss Victoria O'Brien. The family of Mr. Anthony Sayre, the family of Mr. Victor Bantry, the family of Mr. Anita Gates, the family of Mr. Jerry Martinez, the family of Mr. Franz Bama, the family of Mr. Lisa Flores, and the family of Mr. Yashin Ali. For all those who are living in the loss of the weapon, we pray that all my people will grant you comfort and peace during this time of bereavement and that you grant you time of rest today. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Elisa, Ami, Arina, Courtney, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Priya, Kai, Arian, Angel, Age, Garrett, Freedom, Jamal, Whitney. We remember and pray for our loved ones, praying for Jason, Charles S., Derek, Liu, Prince, Charles C., Candy, Christopher, Bam, Gavin, and Keisha. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society. We pray for the poor, the destitute. We pray for those who are homeless. We pray for those who have families but choose to be on the street. We continue to pray for the elderly, those at home, those in hospitals, those in hospices, those in senior care facilities. We pray to the community and for persons struggling to offer new illnesses. We remember and pray for persons back in the HIV and AIDS in the related countries. We pray for those back in the communities, those back in the communities, and for victims who are in We pray for those who are back in the substance abuse and their various challenges, as well as those back in the mental health challenges. In our prayers, we continue to and pray for security forces, for our government, for the churches, for church leadership, for all persons in positions of public trust and authority, for the private sector, for all non governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian aid. We remember in our prayers this morning the members of the international community, praying for those who are ravaged by the effects of war and civil unrest, and those who are ravaged by war. In our prayers, we continue to pray for ourselves 
and our region against the ravages of natural disaster and have inflicted acts of violence and violence. Where the far hearts of our tongues cannot confess, where the whole mind is not with God. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and seven our hearts and bodies in the works of ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. That on the earth, now and ever, we may be preserved in God's name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By means of a long time, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to be each new day in your presence as well as in the presence of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Today, I want to ask you to say a special prayer for our very own Reverend Ilona, smiling, Reverend is going into a surgery in a couple of hours. We pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon her, for her faith to be strong, with regards to trusting and knowing that he is in control. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and the medical team who will be attending to her during this surgery. We pray that his wisdom and guidance will be upon their hands as they minister to her through this surgery. We remember and pray for all of our relatives and her friends who will be in prayer and who are worried about her well-being. We pray that in all things, God will continue to be made known to us and that, of course, he will bring her through successfully out of this surgery. Because we ask it all in Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I want to remind you as well to kindly continue to pray for our Bishop and Mrs. Wright. They would have hopefully by now settled in um, in the U.S. and are preparing for free surgery um, checkups and things like this. And we pray that all continues to go well leading up to the surgery and we continue to pray God's presence and peace upon them as well during this time. With regards to our broadcast schedule, today is Thursday. And so, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. Unfortunately, I have a meeting in the city today and so I'll be traveling that direction and I can't guarantee that I will be back with enough time and energy to complete preparations for um, Bible study. Um, and um, so, I don't want to make any promises with regards to that. I still do want to look at the Three Wise Men and the Feast of the Epiphany. Um, I will see around midday-ish what it's looking like with regards to my meetings and then um, make a final decision about that, about Bible study. But I'm thinking it might be a bit too challenging for me to get that done today and I apologize greatly for that. Of course, next week Thursday, up and running, for certain, we will definitely have our Bible study. <laughs> Those are all my notices, I believe, thus far. And so I want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. And of course, I thank you for joining me this morning for morning prayer. We give God thanks for the blessing to be able to get all of this done. We're going to wrap up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We close off this morning with one entitled, I love thy kingdom, Lord. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. Bye for now.
Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another day Every day I open my eyes I see morning light, morning light I know that the Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before he take me away behind to the grind Success on me This wonderful morning It's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another Another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord 